Hey, hey. I'd like to welcome myself back to this vlog. I honestly do not remember the last thing I vlogged. I'm almost sure it had something to do with dog chews. That's what I was doing last time I had the camera out, but I just got done with another session of sanding dog chews and I'll tell you what, the most time consuming part of this whole process is sanding the chew. And I do want to ask all of you who have bought dog chews before, do you really think they need to be sanded? <laughs> Sanding is time consuming. And maybe I can offer a better price if I didn't have to sand them, but I did notice through the ones I've sold, people do appreciate when the edges are sanded nice and smooth. So there's no chance, you know, that their dog gets their mouth cut or something like that. But check this out, this is where I'm at. I had a little bit of help this time. Um, I had a buddy come over for an afternoon and we put like two hours of work in sanding and we got a lot done together. But I wanna show you guys how I've got them separated. And then I'm gonna drag them into the shop in here and uh, they'll be ready for fulfillment. So let's walk you through it. All right, this bin is medium splits. So, medium size, that has been split like so. You get a lot of different shapes, sizes, lengths vary just a little bit. Then you got medium hole, so a hole antler, sanded edges. Um, again, you get some uh, variation of color, size, etc. But the good thing is, they're all solid, good quality antler. And then what do we have here? This looks like, this is large hole. So again, just a large size, not split down the middle. You get mostly main beam on the large and the XL, but every now and then you do get tines, like these big chunky tines. So these large holes, or any of the hole ones last really long. People like them because they're long lasting. Now the splits, it allows the dog to get the inside quicker, the soft, marrow it's uh that's what they want they want this stuff right here so if anybody's bought a split for their dog you'll see that they they eat that first and they'll kind of dish out the centerpiece so the splits is really what the dog wants um that being said this is large splits so same length as a large and obviously everything varies but i do my best to to put them in different categories and i have some measure measurements on my saw so i can do that as well based off their their length and their width clearly this one is wider and then you might get some that are a little bit longer so again i'm doing my best i did a lot of research i'm just doing my best to categorize them and size them accordingly so these you have smalls so small hole they're about four to five inches small splits these little guys are are pretty tough to sand on because as you can imagine the smaller you get just the thinner the pieces get but these smalls are, are great for small dogs up to like 20 pounds um, poodles all the little mini dogs they love antlers too the first thing i thought of when i started doing antler chews is i just imagine big dogs chewing on antler what i have found through research and the customers i had is plenty of people like the smalls for those small house dogs and um, almost every breed of dog from what i've read loves antlers it's definitely worth a try if you haven't given your dog an antler before it's worth a try to give them one so these are my favorite i don't know why i just i like working with the jumbos you know everything in here is considered a jumbo these are the whole and look how much variation you get in pieces obviously every antler is different so you're going to get a little uh different variation in size but most likely the jumbos are coming off main beam um, this is the back end of a big bull that had some extra points. I cut those off and sanded them down real smooth. And then the jumbo splits is, what, like I said, that's what your dog wants right there. And then after that, I really had a hard time selling the bases with the burrs on them. And I know a lot of people do like that for their dog chews. So I did save the burrs. They're like a little medallion. And some people use them for arts and crafts, which people can buy them on the website for that reason as well. But I saved the bottom part. It's kind of like the base. And with that, you got typically the G1 and the G2 growing off of it. 
so I've got um, I did all splits on the base so you got the jumbos and again you know they vary in size and shape and everything like that but these are like a combination of both the dog is gonna get the soft inside but it's also got a really durable outside so they are long-lasting um, but I've got four sizes and everything so jumbo large and then medium is underneath and then small so again even the small pups can chew on these so these are like uh, base blocks you know snack sticks so that's kind of where I'm at I'm gonna put them in the garage I wanted to give you guys an update and like I said I want to document this whole journey on starting this business this is the first batch of inventory I'm starting with and I really have no clue how long it's gonna last let's go gym time good morning guys I'm gonna share a couple things with you guys um, last night I had to make I didn't have to I'm not saying I, I had to but I made or told shared I had to share the hardest story I've ever had to share over on our Instagram the get hush and Instagram that is bear with me we're getting snowed on here in Salt Lake let me jump in my truck talk to you guys Ooh. holy crap oh. <coughs> all right we're gonna set that down um but last night I I shared a story that happened recently and uh, I'll give you guys a quick overview and I'll probably pull some stuff off social media that can explain it a little better because it was really hard for me to talk about um, a couple months ago we got a message from uh, a, a fan of hush his name was Mike and he was telling us that his brother was diagnosed with pancreatitis cancer and that his health was declining um, quickly and that um, through conversation we found out he's a huge hunter, a big fan of Hush, and they really, they were really hoping that he would live long enough that they can go and, and enjoy another elk hunt, just one more elk hunt together. So we tried to line that up with a cow elk hunt here in Utah. We tried to get like a private land tag, and and uh, like that was actually looking good. We had everything to where we could get the tag, and I think we could have made it happen. But unfortunately, um, Jeremy. Uh, his health was declining so rapidly that he couldn't do it. He was in such poor health that he never he never had the chance to go on that last elk hunt. So uh, we got on a phone call just to try to lift his spirits. We got on a phone call with him and his family and everyone at Hush. We we're on a big like conference type of call, and uh, we just at least got the chance to uh, talk to him over the phone and give him a chance to kind of ask us questions and a whole bunch of stuff. We had a good conversation. We got to meet his daughter and just everything was going really good. But through the conversation, I found out that they live right where I grew up, right here in West Jordan, Utah. And I was sitting in my shop and I decided that I would gift them something. So I asked them on the phone if I was welcome to come to their house just to visit Jeremy and visit everybody and just kind of sit down and meet in person. And so I did that and I gifted them this big elk antler that I had found that uh, my buddy Jeff at Bone Tats had, had uh, carved in the Hush logo. So yeah, it was just a special time. I got to meet with the family, hang out with them. They were so inviting and welcoming and just having me there. And it, I really felt like I knew the whole family for years. That's how fast we connected, just being hunters and stuff. Um, but unfortunately, four days after we met, um, Jeremy lost his battle with cancer and he passed away. So, I mean, that that hit me hard big time and uh you know they kept saying after i left how many people would come visit him and how he just was so happy to talk about his conversation with hush and you know that antler how much it meant to him and for like that whole week after he passed i was getting messages from so many different people i mean they told me jeremy had a lot of friends and i'll tell you what jeremy had a ton of friends because a lot of them were reaching out to me through dms and text and the family was as well just saying that that's the most life they've seen out of jeremy for months after you know when i visited him and after i visited him so that's a pretty special moment for us but uh, we got on our stories and we got on Instagram. We wanted to rally the hunting community together. So I want to 
also invite you guys to a chance to help his family out. So his wife Nikki and his daughter Mia um, has got a, a Venmo account. I'm gonna put it on the screen. I'm gonna link. I'm gonna put it down in the description box if I can. Um, guys, anything helps. I know it's rough times right now, but we just want to rally the hunting community and show their family some love. And if you have anything to give, even if it's just something nice in the comment section, drop it in the comment section in this video. I'll make sure they see them. And uh, yeah, so I wanted to share that with you guys. You know, it's it always feels good to give back. And one thing that BMAC talked about on our stories was usually this time of the year we have uh, the expo and we have a movie night. And with the movie night, we always give back to whether it's an organization or a family or, you know, something. And over the years, we've been able to contribute and give back to a lot of awesome things. And uh, this year, we're dedicating that uh, that idea, since we're not having the events, to Jeremy's family. It's, it feels really good to have these platforms across my personal stuff and Hush to be able to give back and, and kind of shine the light on things that need to be that need a little light and love. So, uh, yeah, hope you guys will help me out. Well, I'm going to touch on this real quick because I put it on my Instagram. Slowly, my body's become dependent on this crap, Afrin. And I put up a little post, and I can't believe how many people can relate. So I, I'm congested out here in Salt Lake, and I really think it has to do with the poor air quality and the dry air. And anyways, I got basically addicted to this crap and I'm on like day four of cold turkey not using it and uh, <coughs> I'm kind of stuffed up so that explains that and I'm sure there's plenty of people that can relate to the Afrin crap. Today is an exciting day. It is February 8th and I'm just pulling up to my parents house right here to help move stuff because tomorrow February 9th is tear out day for my parents remodel so hopefully you guys have been caught up enough to kind of know what's going on but to give you the quick rundown um, I started selling antler dog shoes in December to help earn some money to help my parents remodel their house um, this is the house that I grew up in and it, it needs an update big time so you guys showed a lot of love I sold a, a ton of uh, antlers pretty much everything I had at my house after I cut them up we still need to sell a lot more dog chews and again, more information about the my new business, the antler dog chew business I'm starting. But today is all dedicated to the tear out and the beginning of what's gonna be probably two or three months of remodeling my parents' house, start to finish. So we're gonna go inside, we got a lot to move. Um, I'm gonna basically plan on being here all day. So let's go inside and see what work we can get done. And uh, yeah, through this process, you're gonna be able to say goodbye to the swamp cooler because we're getting central air. Progress is already being made. My dad's buddy brought us this dump trailer, which is super helpful. We're gonna have this and a much bigger one. It's gonna be delivered, uh, I think today or tomorrow. So let me, guys, let me show you guys what we're working with. I'm tearing down the old entertainment system. It's time to just get rid of the bulky furniture and get more modern stuff where the TVs are on the wall and we don't need this giant thing because this room isn't very big to begin with. But I wanna give you guys a walk through of the upstairs. This is all gonna look different. Um, heck, tomorrow this place is gonna look different. But yeah, this kitchen, this was my mom's worst nightmare. She's always wanted a larger kitchen and uh, we're gonna make that happen. So we gotta remove the appliances, empty out the cabinets, empty out the shelves. This little room, if you've seen before, was considered a dining room, but just really struggled with the flow when we had a table in the middle. So we always just had stuff on the edges and um, my parents never really loved it. So this room is actually a pretty big space and really cool with all the windows. We've got double pane windows all the way around and it's just really bright with daylight. Um, so the plan here is that the kitchen actually moves from there into this space. This becomes a nice family room with the TV mounted on the wall. Again, we just want to get everything on the wall. And then from this corner, you got the front door. All these walls gone. This is a closet right here, gone. And then I think we'll build a new rail system around the stairs, but exciting. Just so exciting because 
by opening up the floor plan, getting rid of these closets and a lot of wall space, we'll just create just a much larger feel. So super excited. My buddy, Zach Gordon is actually the general contractor on the job. Shout out to Zach um, for all his help. He was willing just to help out as much as he can. So I appreciate it. I've got a lot of people to thank through this process and I'll document every step of the way. But yeah, from this side, we've got the stairwell that goes down. This is all gonna be tore out, like fixtures tore out. This is the swamp cooler on the inside. Unfortunately, it leaked. And it's just been a problem ever since. All that's gonna be torn out. We'll have a nice closet here for jackets and things, but yeah, I thought I'd give you guys a walkthrough so you guys can see it before it goes down. Basically, that wall to that wall completely tore out. Welcome to my kitchen, AKA the office. I've got some updates uh, to show you guys and we'll share those on uh, the next vlog. We got some changes here at the house, but more than anything, I just wanted to wrap this video up because I really didn't say much after that. Um, so the day after this, we went out and did tear out. Day one of tear out will be coming soon. The dog chew company is coming soon, guys. It is going to launch the 17th of this month, February 17th. Um, I picked that day for a very special reason and you guys will figure that out probably on the next video. So it's 10 15 on a Friday night. Welcome to my life solo. It's all I do really is work like a lot. I get a little alone time, obviously when I'm on the mountain and then when I go to the gym, but guys, this is my life Friday night, 10 o'clock. Um, but yeah, I just want to say thanks for watching. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. We're going to be documenting a lot of cool stuff moving forward. So the, the kind of current situation is the remodel at my parents' house, the upgrades at my house, and my dog chew business. Um, and then everything else in between just on the daily stuff. So uh, yeah, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. Hope you guys are having a good weekend. We'll see you probably on tomorrow. Like I got to get a video up soon because if I'm going to launch on the 17th, I got to get you guys caught up. So I'm a little bit behind. But that's why I'm at the station doing it all right now. So uh, again... Hope you guys are having a great weekend. We'll see you on the next video. Oh, crap.